sweet. All right, I think we are live. Let me check this, check my page. So, I see it. You see it? I Yay. see it. <laughs> there we go. Sweet. Turn that off. So I have to enlarge the page so I can also see the uh, see the comments there. Okay. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. I wish I could figure out how to make it easy to stream live on Facebook and on Instagram. I've been having such a problem oh, with wow. that. Man, it's been- When you find out, you have to educate me as well. <laughs> man, so I just, I went live on Instagram today and it's like, you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do it over, I'm just, I'm over it. <laughs> we'll download it and upload it later, so. <laughs> Hey, you guys, we got some folks that are already on. Y'all say hey, hello. Everybody. How are y'all doing tonight? Thanks so much hello. for joining us. Yay. Say hello. If, you, if you're on, the, on, the, uh, on our live, go ahead and say hello so we know where you're, you're joining us from. I see Aisha. She is all, always on uh, from New York, from Brooklyn. Hello. That's uh, Andrea from uh, Columbus, Georgia. Oh, yay, you guys. Good. Hello, everybody. Hi, Sheena from the Bahamas. Oh, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. So awesome. I don't know. Jeremiah, what's the weather like where you are with, in, in Maryland? I think we're in the 80s. This really? Yeah. Oh, that's so nice. Yep. I think we're in the 80s. Oh, the, evenings, the evenings are beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah. Little breeze last night. Uh, it's, it's perfect weather. That's so nice. I think we had a heat index of 105 the other day. My Lord. It's ridiculous. So I think the high was, was 92 today. Wow. It's 92 today. And so, but my son, he's like, it's 105 degrees outside. Everything. You need to go outside. You need to go outside. No, I can't go outside. It's 105 degrees. I'm like, hey, <laughs> y'all better get this water wow. outside. So is this still and, that sporadic rain? Because I know when we would come for Judah, it was it would rain not, and not rain, but rain. <laughs> you know what? It hasn't been raining that much here. Not okay. That much. Yeah. Usually, you're right. You have to. Anytime you come here in the summer, it's like. You just got to take an umbrella with you wherever because you never know at four o'clock it's going to rain and then Absolutely. it's going to be all right. <laughs> Absolutely. That is a given. That is a given. Well, you guys, <laughs> I'm so excited to have tonight with me, Jeremiah Hicks, and he is visiting all the way from Maryland. I was going to say Baltimore, but it's not. <laughs> we were talking earlier and I was asking him um, where in Maryland and uh you know, I, you, a lot of times you say Maryland and we just automatically assume Baltimore, but he's yes. not from Baltimore. <laughs> not Baltimore. So About there, an hour away. Yeah, an hour away. So tell every, introduce yourself, tell everybody where you're serving and what you're doing right now. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Jeremiah Hicks. Let me first say, LaRue, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this grand opportunity. Um, this is a full circle moment, and hopefully um, I can tell it uh, at some point. Um, throughout our conversation. My name is Jeremiah Hicks. I'm from what we call the DMV area. Uh, my parents were um, born and raised, actually my mom in Maryland, um, on the Eastern Shore. Uh, my dad is from uh, DC. And um, here I am in PG County, Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, I am a minister of music and worship pastor at the New Home Baptist Church in Landover, Maryland. Shout out to my church uh, where my dad and my mom serve. Uh, my dad is a pastor. He's been the pastor there for um, 35 years, almost 35 years now. Um, I'm 36 years old. My dad was the assistant pastor at the time when I was born. Um, and then a year later, he became the pastor of the church. So I'm a PK. Um, I've been at the same church for 36 years. I joined the music, <laughs> I know, right? Um, it's probably an odd story. I joined the music ministry when I was two years old, sang my first solo at age five. And then I started leading worship with the youth praise team at age 14. 
And um, then from then on, it's, it's just history. I became the Minister of Music officially, uh, I believe March of 2005. Um, uh, I, oh, actually March, of, I'm sorry, March of 2008. Um, but I preached my first sermon, April 9th, 2005. So I'm a preacher of the gospel as well. Um, and so it's been a joy serving with my parents and serving in that way. I know a lot of my PK friends um, aren't necessarily with their parents anymore. A lot of them have transitioned, but it's been an honor and a privilege that God will still give me an assignment to be where my parents are, to serve and to use my gifts and my ability um, and my anointing in this place. And so it's been an honor and a privilege to serve um, in this way. As I said, I'm a worship leader. Um, and so I'm the minister of music there at New Home. Shout out to the music ministry there. Uh, we have about four choirs and we have a praise team and um, we have a, a, an awesome band, um, an amazing team of people. And of course we've been in a pandemic, so we, we haven't sung together in a while because we've been doing virtual, um, but we are working towards getting back to that place where the team can come back together again. So it's been an honor, honor and a privilege. I am a husband um, of one wife, Tanisha, shout out to you, love you so much. In September, we'll be celebrating nine years and Yay. we have a beautiful daughter, uh, Nevaeh Tahila Hicks. Wow. Um, Nevaeh, heaven spelled backwards, Tahila means to sing, heaven sings. I love it. Um, so, yeah. Um, and my wife, actually, she wanted to name her daughter that. She said when she was a little child. Wow. And uh, so when we first met and we started dating, that's one of the first things she said, if we ever got married and we have a daughter, we're going to name her Nevaeh Tahila. And there was no argument in me. And six years later, uh, we have a daughter, Nevaeh Tahila. And so she is so precious. Oh, thank so you. So precious. So precious. Thank I you. watched that video when she, um, I think y'all had a tea party. <laughs> She she warmed my heart for Father. She said, "This is your weekend. I'm going to do everything that you want to do." And she she got um I think it was pork rinds, pork skins, yes. and we had blueberry muffins and yes. we had juice. And she put it on top of her doll table and she said, "Daddy, I'm going to get dressed up." She put a dress on. Yes. Um, her mama's <laughs> shoes. Yes, it was it. She put on mama's shoes, mama's shoes, um, and she put on a leather jacket in the middle of June. <laughs> and she said, "Daddy, I need you to get dressed up." So I went and grabbed the blazer and some pants and uh, we ate together. And then she yeah. said, put on some music and we danced. So it was Oh beautiful. my gosh. Y'all have She's pork rind and blueberry muffins. Oh, blueberry muffins and pork rind. It's just the best. <laughs> it's just the best. <laughs> you know, like, what, was, what was the first, do you remember what your first solo was? My first solo was, actually, he's got the whole world in his hands. Right. Wow. That was my very first solo, and it was about eight of us that stood across the church, and um, I think three of us cried before we sang. Three of my friends, <laughs> and I did my first. I did my first solo. If he got his, he's got his whole. Um, he's got the whole world in his hands. Wow! And then about a year later, I did a song by I think his name is Walt Whitman. Yeah. Uh, and it was a song, um, powerful song. Um, called Think Big, and the words were, I might as well think big if I'm going to think at all. My mom chose that song for me, and she rehearsed it with me, and um, that song has really kind of just cultivated my life, that if I'm going to think, I might as well think big. So okay. shout out to my mom. Thanks, mom, for that song. I, I want you to sing a little bit of that, because I don't think I know that song, but while he's getting ready to sing that song, um, y'all, Sheena and Andrea and um, Aisha, what was your first solo in in church if y'all type in tell me what your first solos were when you were uh, a kid okay wow. sing a little bit of it okay this is I, I know I remember about eight eight words okay, so talk. when um I might as well think big if I'm gonna think at all I might as well think big if I'm gonna think at all I just can't remember the rest of it but that line is enough That's all. <laughs> for me That's to keep going yeah Listen, it was a powerful you know, message for a five-year-old yeah you might as well think big I love that now we have to go and find, find that yes I think it's Walt Whitman yeah so you you said you guys have you have four choirs Yes. We have the women's choir. The women's choir, they do every fifth Sunday. Um, and so they're four to five times a year. Uh, we have the men's choir. 
We have the youth choir and the youth praise team or the youth front line uh, that sings in front of the praise team. And then we have Voices of Unity, which is like the young adult choir. Um, and we have a praise team, and we call them the front line, which actually we adopted the term front line from Judah. Oh, yeah, Judah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yes. man, Judah. If you guys don't uh, aren't familiar, Judah Music Conference was a music conference that we hosted at a church that I was the worship pastor at for almost 10 years, Faith World. And uh, I think that was where I first met Jeremiah was at Okay, Jesus. I could have a two hour conversation about this. Let me try to condense it. Let me tell you all, LaRue, this is a, y'all, this is a, I have to tell it, this is a full circle moment for me. I have had the opportunity to travel and meet a lot of worship leaders, artists, minstrels, Levites, creators, whatever we call them, psalmists. Um, but, this moment here is probably one of the most special moments in my 36 years because um, in my development as a worship leader, I traveled to Judah and I think I've come to, I, I think I came to about 12, 12 or 13 Judas. Wow. Yeah, 12 or 13 Judas. Um, it was only one year that I missed because it was the year that I got married and my wife and I went to a marriage conference at our church that same week. It hurt to go, but it made sense for us to go. Yeah. Um, but we went every year and that Judah experience and my, you know, I, I think I started going to Judah at age 15 or 16. Wow. Yeah. And I would travel with my church, um, the ministers of music, the minister of music and worship pastors at that time, they would take a trip and the church would kind of help pay um, at that time and we would go. And even when the church stopped going, I had made it in my mind that Judah was something that had to take place every year. It literally molded the worship leader that I am today. I have to say that. Yeah. And um, you and Bishop Brown, you all literally from, from afar at that time um, really just showed us what it meant to operate in excellence, to be to be united. And of course we know that nothing's perfect. Um, no system is perfect, but you all came so close to making it look so seamless and so perfect. And not just from the experience of having LED lights and, and, and smoke and uh, amazing t-shirts and all of those things. And of course the amazing music that you all wrote and the team and the energy, um, but also the, the anointing that you all carry, the oil that you all carried, it was evident um, that you all weren't just um, selfish worship leaders. You all poured out into all of us. I mean, people would come from all over the world to come to Judah, um, Judah Conference. I mean, I remember every year, Hawaii. Um, I mean, just different places. Yeah. And that experience that week, and I remember literally, even though Judah was about three days, we would literally come on a Monday we would come to you all's Tuesday night service. Oh, yeah. We would come to the Tuesday night um, um, midweek service, and then we would spend all the whole, entire conference with you all. We attended the classes. You know, and Judah wasn't one of those conferences where you skipped the classes. You just didn't do that um, because you were teaching. Jacinto Sims was oh, teaching. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was it was just an incredible experience. Um, uh, from from Ronnie Harrison preaching wow. to and I can't remember what was my guy's name. He came and he preached Veron Ash. Veron Ash. Ah, oh, Veron Ash and just so many people. And and what I loved about Judah is that Judah actually captured what I believe is a true multicultural experience. Yeah. Um, many churches that I've been able to lead worship, especially even in the area, um, I think they're more multi-racial multi-ethnic but not necessarily multicultural in terms of there's the experience isn't it's one culture being experienced wow. one cultural experience judah brought everything into pers perspective um we would go from bishop being on the piano and it felt like we uh, we were at a Bill Gaither gathering yeah. and then the next thing you know Kirk Carr was coming out on stage yeah. Or yeah. Jay Moss was coming out on stage. Um, or, I mean, just different people. Or Risen one year, I yeah. remember, coming to yeah. stage. Um, or then you have the Crab family. Wow, Risen. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and they're coming back together. They're coming back wow. together. Yep. Risen. So you all gave us the experience, and we didn't feel, cultures, we didn't feel left out. We didn't feel, I remember times you all were singing, you all would sing something in Spanish. Yeah. You know, it was just the, it was a true multicultural experience. Not like we, 
we, we, we think it is in a lot of churches. You all gave us that true authentic experience. And that's what I was attracted to. I was attracted to how the diversity in worship and how God could bring all of these cultures, all of these people together with all different kinds of backgrounds, some from the city, some from the country, black, white, Asian, Hawaiian, African, whatever it was, Indian, and everybody had an opportunity to be a part of the worship and to be free. So that's why when we came back, we would, we would, we would stay on Saturday and we would go to, what was that place called? The Congo, I think Disney it's a oh. restaurant called the Congo in downtown Disney. Yeah. We go to downtown Disney <laughs> and uh, to the Lego store and do all those things. And on Sundays, we would literally um, come to Judah because we had to experience you all for the last time. Then we would fly home on Monday morning and um, try not to be depressed for seven days a week <laughs> back in Maryland. <laughs> yeah. So wow. Man, that's when I met you. And I appreciate that, LaRue. You are, you are a giant. You are a giant. Wow. You are a giant, and well, um, I, I, I don't I don't say that lightly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jeremiah. I I appreciate that you you are so encouraging, um, and you know, hearing stories like that really gives me, and I'm sure Bishop Brown, when you've spoken to him, gives you, gives us the encouragement yes. to continue. You know, Absolutely. because it's hard, it gets difficult, right? And so I appreciate you sharing. Wow. Um, all of that. Um, and I have my Judah shirt on. Today. I know. I saw that. I see that line. I see that line. It is forever etched in my heart. Forever. Forever. <laughs> so good. Man, so having, um, well, let me say this too, because you made a point. You said um, that, that you saw multicultural, multicultural versus multi-race. Racial. Racial yep. church. Yes. Which that's so, it, it makes so much sense because, you know, even though a church can be predominantly black, it can still be multicultural because you have so many different cultures, even within Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And we didn't feel slighted when we came to Judah. Yeah. There are times where you go to certain churches and it's a lot of eth ethnicity there, a lot of, a lot of um, races there, but you only experience one, one culture, style, one, culture, one, yeah. style, one way. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think that's why it's important for us. I know I saw a conversation about, um, I think you'd shared it on your page with um, uh, Pastor William Murphy. And one of the things that they were talking about was, do, it, do we do away now with CCM? Yes. You yes. know, and, and, and we, we can't because that's what brings the multiculturalness of Absolutely. the kingdom. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that we have to be careful when addressing we know that we're we're dealing with with racism. Mm -hmm. Black lives do matter, and I but I think we need to be careful because um, I have I have white friends, I have Spanish friends, mm -hmm. um, I have friends of all races that I love dearly. Yeah. And even though my life matters, and I want them to know it matters, you know, my friends. I never have to question with them if my life matters. Right. Um, and I think that we should be careful even with the church about what we do away with um, and losing people because of, I think one of the biggest hardships, LaRue, and I don't even know why I'm going this way, um, preferences, I think they kill us. Mm -hmm. Preferences kill us, especially in worship. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, what we prefer, what we think will give God glory. I'm going to give God glory in this way. It's my preference. It should be sung like this. It should mm -hmm. be done like this. Mm -hmm. And we really forsake, well, how does God want it to sound? How does, because yeah. we're so preference oriented. Yeah. And so I, I tell God in my worship, let me be woke, as they say, yeah. but I want to be, I, I want his preference, his opinion. I want his, his way to be the way. Yeah. I don't, I don't want it to be a black way. Right. Or, or man's way. Yeah. I want it to be God's way, whatever that looks like, whatever it sounds like. Right. Yeah. One of the persons made the comment too, that, you know, so many times we're so quick to kick something off or move something or, you know, down, talk down about something because yes. we can't do it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, so for, for me, for example, you know, I, I can sing black gospel. Yeah. It's not a, it's not my top pick of, style of worship for me to say right. right it's not but i'm not gonna do away with it 
You know what Absolutely. I mean? Um, I'm fortunate enough to have a team that I can pull on different people yeah. to, to focus on different styles of, you know, different wow. styles of, of music. Um, but I think that that's, that that's where a lot of that comes from, you know, too. Absolutely. If you don't feel comfortable with doing it and you automatically kind of feel like, well, you know, well, we just, we, we're not going to do that. That's, that's not God. <laughs> you know, you we just miss it. Yeah. You, you just know. miss it. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you are handling not having your team. Like how are, how are, how are they doing now? I know you, wow. you said you guys weren't streaming prior to, um, COVID and, and quarantining and things like that. Right. How are you guys handle it now? Yeah. So we weren't streaming beforehand. And so this pandemic has definitely pushed charge and stretched us, um, in different ways. So we started streaming, um, in March when the pandemic happened because we, we didn't want to, um, lose any souls we literally wanted to say look we have to do what we have to do to connect the dots to make sure that the congregation doesn't feel like they're missing their shepherd mm -hmm. um that they're not getting a word whatever it is um so literally um shout out to my wife we literally came together um and um as i said my my parents are you know my dad is a pastor of the church um leaders of the church and so literally we came together and we literally found a way to live stream um professionally um, we built and made intros. We used iMovie. We downloaded apps. We downloaded different things just to make sure we kept in line with that experience. Now, at first, the first three weeks, I, it was no music. My dad was just preaching. Yeah. And we said, no, let's, inco let's incorporate that because certain people's like, I'm missing the worship. Mm -hmm. You know, Jeremiah, will you sing something? Will you do wow. something? Um, and so literally we found a way to do it where we could include um, that worship experience to include announcements, um, to include celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And especially our graduates in 2020, yeah. who didn't get a chance to walk, walk the stage. Um, and so between us and the media team, we got together and we literally found a way to stream and to get the word out. And the people have been so blessed. Um, I think one of the greatest things that I uh, can say about my dad is even after Sunday morning service, he literally goes Facebook Live every Sunday personally just to connect with the congregation. That's so great. Yeah, a few hours after he'll go and he'll just say, how are, how are you all doing? I hope you will. He'll have practical conversations. Some of them like, Pastor, I miss you. Pastor, I'm struggling. Pastor, I'm this. Mm -hmm. And um, the membership, the ministers uh, are, are lending their help and to do what they have to do to be able to reach out and not lose the congregation. And I think one of the greatest things with my dad being a shepherd um, is that he really emphasized to us as family that as, as being the shepherd, um, I have to have the smell of sheep on me. I don't feel yeah, like the smell man. of sheep are, are on me. Um, and so he does what he can do um, to connect with them on a level where he's not untouchable, he's not unreachable. Um, you know, membership has his phone number. My dad has never been one of those guys. He's very, and of course, there are certain meetings, there are administrators that can handle certain things, but he makes himself available in that way, which I think is great. And of course, I'm missing um, the team, um, just singing with them every week. It's, it's, been, it's been since March. Yeah. Um, so we're working towards some things now to get the team back together. Yeah. Um, so that we can move forward because we have grasped um, and still grasping the idea of live streaming. Mm -hmm. And we want it to come across great. We want it to be in a spirit of excellence because we know now that what we're doing is more than those that are inside of the walls. There are people from California watching. There are people from Georgia. There are people from other other continents that are watching yeah. um, and that they, they tune in and they chime in. They ran across the live and now they've become regular viewers. Wow. So, yeah, it's it's incredible. And then we have people who aren't in the membership of the church and every week they're giving. They're giving on giving. Wow. Fund. They're going to the church website and they're giving because they're being blessed by the ministry. So um, we're seeing the blessing um, in this pandemic and just increasing our perspectives in terms of, hey, let's maximize this moment. Let's take lemons. Let's make lemonade. That's right. um, and let's do what we have to do. So, of course, I'm missing um, everyone and missing, missing the team and missing that corporate worship experience where you're with people um, because singing into a camera yeah. in the audience is, is strange. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> a struggle. It, it, it's a struggle. So yeah. you, so you, you, how, how long, when did you start adding the music into the stream? So we started maybe about 
three three weeks into March after we won the pandemic, we started adding uh, the music in, and I would literally play a track um, and sing um, and really just pray about the songs that should be sung yeah. for that Sunday experience. And the responses from people that say, oh my gosh, this is the song that I needed today. This is a blessing. This is, you know, and just really yeah. just trying to be focused in, in that to encourage the people. Because yeah. some people are doing really well in the pandemic. Yeah. And then yeah. some people are struggling. Absolutely. Some people are struggling. So just trying to be open to that, um, trying to make the appeal to those who aren't struggling, but also make that strong appeal to those who are struggling. Yes. Um, trying just to become um, all things to all men in that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So w how many songs per service were you doing? So we would do one song. We would literally do intro video. Mm -hmm. Then we would do our Give Lify um, offering right. type of um, thing. And then we would literally go to um, praise and worship slash song of preparation. So just one song. Yes. So okay. just one song. Yep. One song that would just kind of lead into bef right before the preaching. Yeah. So service would be 45 minutes to an hour stream. Yeah. Um, you know, people's attention spans and all that as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. But um, it would still be be that rich experience. But as we're yeah. building and we're, we're going to bring the team back, we're literally um, rerouting how we're doing worship. And um, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, what's, that's, what's that's, to come. That's really great. We did the same same kind of scenario. We um, started out the same with just w show, showing pre-recorded like service songs from service. We would show oh, got it. initially. So, um, but then we once a week would bring in three singers in our band, and we would record like maybe four or five songs um, yeah. to, to cover the midweek service and then the Sunday morning service, and we would show like two songs. Um, per service and um, but we just came back not this pat this past Sunday was our second Sunday back okay and the first Sunday back and pastor said it this past Sunday the first Sunday back was the strangest thing nobody told me to be prepared because you have to like at our at our church you know we're following all the CDC guidelines but we are requiring everyone to keep their mask on throughout service yes. so yes. that's that's huge because for an hour, you got to keep your mask on after you, you know, stand in there with, during praise and worship, you know, we did two songs live and, and nobody told me to be prepared for the people, the sea of masks. Wow. <laughs> it's like, Absolutely. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, you, you kind of know, you can't, t you know, you don't want to tell them to shout, you know, because you don't want them to feel uncomfortable, but you know, Absolutely. it's like, if they shout, yeah, I don't want anybody to hyperventilate, you know. Right. <laughs> right. Like, raise right. your hands. So I, you know, <laughs> trying to be more encouragement of like, okay, raise your hands, you know. Don't absolutely. Don't say but stay safe. But stay be safe, you know. If you need to safe move, worship. Go outside if you need to. You know, I didn't say that, but but nobody, right. you know, prepared me for that. But but then this past Sunday, I was just like, I just told them to sing and shout, you know, and just. Whatever wow. they felt comfortable with, and the, but the presence of God was so strong this past Sunday. Like it was, it was, it was, it was very tangible. Um, but but the first Sunday, it was such a distraction. It was the, it was the craziest thing. You I talk believe. about a distraction of people not responding. Yeah. Boy, when they have a mask on and you can't hear them, and they looking at you, and all you just see is just and, eyes. It's and you don't see expression. You don't know if they're laughing, they're smiling, if they're crying. Everybody looks the same. Boy, you got to walk in faith. You really got to <laughs> lead in faith. <laughs> but if nobody can do it, LaRue can. <laughs> oh, my God. God be the glory, man. So God be the glory. So just, you know, when you guys do come back, just know that's, that's something you got to. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you. Well, I'll start praying right now. Right. <laughs> I'll start <laughs> now. Oh, my gosh. Um, I want to ask you about um, singing because your your voice and vocal health because you started singing as young as two years old. Yes. But then you're also a very well sought after uh, studio singer, background vocalist. Um, so talk to us a little bit about um, how you've maintained your voice for all these years. Wow. Well, let me say this. I am a late bloomer when it comes to it. Um, I think like many singers, uh, we rely on our gift alone, not realizing that um, God has given us responsibility 
that comes with the gift. Yeah. You have to maintenance the gift. You have to take care of the gift. You have to respect the gift. You have to love the gift. You got to yeah. grace it. Um, and while God is good and God will bless it, God is asking us to bless it as well. Uh, my dad has a saying that I love. He says, we're no more divine than we are domestic. Um, and so we're spiritual, but we're also, we need to be practical yes. as well. While we're praying for God to, God, use me, God, uh, let me be an instrument. Let me be a vessel. God is also requiring that we do what we have to do to be that instrument, to be that vessel. Um, and so basically, um, maybe I would say in the last four years, in the last four years, um, I've really been trying to do what I can to really have maintenance on my voice. Um, now I'm a type of person, I love juice, so I love sugar, I love fried foods. You um, like and I would do high, high C Kool Aid fruit. Lord, like, Lord fruit. pray, pray. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I would literally sing on that type of diet, but I realized that my, my stamina, my endurance, um, hoarseness, fatigue, all of those things would play a part. All of those things would play a part. And literally, um, my brother's a CrossFit trainer, as I was sharing with you earlier. Um, my entire family works out with him at least three times a week. I think I saw y'all outside. Yes. We, he had us outside one day, and that was probably the 90-degree day. Uh -huh. he, had us, <laughs> he had us outside. Um, because literally, um, I really believe that in, in this season, in this time, God is really just building me to preserve to preserve my gift, to preserve it, to learn how to maintenance it, to, to take care of it. Um, and so I drink more water now than I ever have. Um, I try to make sure that I have movement every day um, in terms of my, my respiratory system and really trying to uh, just push myself to a place where I give my body the, the freedom to sing. Um, shout out to, I had a vocal coach for a few years, Thomasina Portis, uh, one of the most amazing vocal coaches in the DC area. Um, and she would say, when you exercise and when you take care of yourself and when you put the right stuff in your body, she said, you're giving God a different kind of yes. Mm -hmm. And that was so important. And that just really struck a nerve when she said it. Wow. You know what? You're right. You're, she said, you're, when you drink water, when you get rest, um, when you, when you release stress, um, when you give yourself yourself moments of being quiet and stillness you get yourself ready when you tell you tell you literally tell god I, i'm available i'm available to you um you can use me through my body um and i realized that um our bodies are instruments you know it's kind of like having a saxophone you have an alto saxophone if you stuff it with toilet paper and stuff it with sand yeah. you compromise the sound of the instrument and so if we're just putting anything into our bodies and we're not exercising, I'm realizing that I'm not working at full potential or the, um, to my max mm -hmm. if I'm not respecting and taking care of my body. So that's I'm a late bloomer, but I'm learning. And, and since August, I've lost 30 pounds. Come on, 30 pounds. Yeah, I've cut down on the on the carbs and a lot more water. I'm taking vitamins. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, three days. I'm, I'm making sure I'm getting rest. Um, I'm having quiet time. I'm not on social media and TV all day. I have those moments. And then I start every morning with prayer with my family. Yeah. Every morning we have devotion. Every morning we give our day to God in the beginning. So those have made a huge difference um, in the, the menstrual that God is allowing me to become. That's so beautiful. You know, I'm thinking about you know, when you said you, you changed your, your, your diet, some of your eating habits, you know, I, I started out as an instrumentalist. I started, my first instrument was, let's see, I started playing piano wow. um, in second grade, but then in middle school, I started, <laughs> I started playing trombone, you know, wow. in middle school, they let you choose an instrument. So I picked the drum, the trombone. You should and revisit I, that. No, listen, let me tell you what happened. <laughs> we had a dog, Jeremiah, and I would run around the house. Okay. And you know, the, the trombone has a slide. Right. So I would just run around the house and chase my dog with the slide. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> wow. I, I played the flute for about five years. Okay. I picked up the flute, but what, I, what made me think about it 
is, you know, when you are an instrumentalist, you can't have, you can't like chew gum and eat candy and have those things in your mouth. You have to have cleaned your mouth out That's prior good. to playing your instrument because yes. the saliva and all of that, you're blowing into your instrument, eventually takes up into your, wow. you have to clean it out periodically. You got to, you know, drop the cloth in and clean that. Yes. Out. So it's the same thing, you know, with our body. You know, wow. the other thing too is you, you mentioned rest. Um, yes. We, a lot of times when we think about vocal health, people will ask, well, what do you do to get rid of a sore throat or a hoarse throat? You know, resting, you have to have rest. Absolutely. You have to have rest. Um, it's a doctor, a, a natural doctor that I love. I look him up on YouTube. Actually, my wife and I, when we first got married, he's a natural doctor we used to go to him. His name is Dr. Eric Berg. Um, he's here in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And we were going to him for a bit. And um, he has a lot of great natural remedies for the voice. Mm -hmm. um, and he would do certain things that would remove hoarseness. Like, for instance, you know, I, would, I never could say the word correctly. Was it your larynx? Larynx? Uh, yes, yeah. I always struggle saying it. So, yes, the L, that. Um, and, and what I understood as hoarseness, um, well, I guess what I thought hoarseness was, was just all of this... Uh, I thought it was like redness and, 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 and sores, but it was really your, your lens being lit, raised up. So he would have exercises where we would do this and we would rest it or taking our index and our thumb and placing it here, applying pressure and just pushing in um, those things and just holding it for a couple of minutes or having someone else to do it. And that would literally relax all that's happening in here. Um, and so he's one of the natural doctors um, that I that I literally go to, you know, because people have all kinds of remedies. Put hot sauce in your water. Oh, do this. Do that. <laughs> all of those things. And then I realized that even a little cayenne in water is good for your throat as well. And of course, I do a lot of ginger um, and because a lot of teas dry me out. And I don't do a lot of hot teas as well. I do a lot of room temperature mm -hmm. um, at this point just to give myself a natural flushing. Yeah. Yeah. You do have to be mindful of what your what works well for your body absolutely um, because like while cayenne and hot sauce and all of that might work well for one person it might not you know for someone else absolutely so that's really cool um one of the things about someone asked asked the question on facebook how do you feel about masks she was a, she's a singer and and i told her i i noticed whenever i wear a certain style of mask i feel my larynx like jacked up Wow. It feels so tight in my throat. And when I mentioned it to my vocal coach, you can actually move your larynx. So if you take your, your fingers, yes. you can move it like side to side. Wow. Yeah. And so just massaging that area. So if you feel tight in your throat area, you can kind That's of move good. it from side to side and, um, you know, just kind of help it relax. That's good. Well, that's really, really cool. And you know, it's funny that you mentioned a mask. I, I sang at a church for the first time, maybe about three weeks ago, I got invited because at, in the beginning, I wasn't really accepting any engagements. I'm around my senior grandparents on the weekend. Yeah. So I just kind of stayed away from being around masses of people. Um, but I have, it's a pretty good mask that my, my wife had ordered and has a filter and everything. And my voice was so clear because literally, you know, um, I use a humidifier as well. Let me say that yeah. humidifiers are really great. And I'll do that all through the night. Um, but I put on a mask and when I put this mask on at the service, literally it kept everything in. So I literally, it almost operated as a humidifier for me. Yeah. So my voice was super clear. Yeah. You I didn't feel dry. With the mask on? With the ma no, I took the mask off, but I had it on for the entire service until oh, it was my time to sing. I when I removed it, my voice was so clear, and it all, it was almost as if the mask had kind of worked as a humidifier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I use essential oils, so uh, I would put a, I would spray a little bit of my oils on okay. my mask, and that also helps keep my sinuses open. It helps keep my throat open. It just all of that. So we can we can talk about that's good stuff. Yeah talk about that as well um let's see oh studio singing versus live singing that was what I wanted to ask you about because yes. a lot of times people will see um and and not even so much uh, well a lot of times people will see you know background vocalists 
um, and then, but then not realize that, it, that there's different techniques, different things, you know, that you have to bring into play that you might not necessarily have to use um, as a live singer. Absolutely. But then some that cross. Absolutely. Can you talk just a little bit about your 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 mindset of where you go when you're when you have to do some studio singing? Yes, um, studio singing for me um, is my favorite singing, especially as 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 a background singer. Mine too. Yes, as a background singer, I absolutely adore the studio um, because you're in a controlled room. Uh, where you have boxes where you control your own levels. Yeah. <laughs> you control your own track level. You can control other people who's who's loud, who's down, what you need to hear, mm -hmm. um, the click track, whatever it is. Um, what, I, what I love about studio singing is the studio singing is where you literally clean up everything that you don't catch in the live. Mm -hmm. And um, so for me, studio singing, especially like if you do a live session and you go into the studio to do the overdubs, um, sometimes you may hear, ooh, we slipped a little bit here. It may have been a little flat, a little sharp. It wasn't exactly on. So you get to you get the chance to go into the studio and really kind of fix your wrongs, yeah, <laughs> make yeah. right your wrongs. Um, and so with studio singing, what I love is when you have just a camaraderie of singers and you're able to really fill the room, fill, fill the singers. You're able, whoever your, your, your partner is, your, uh, the tenor that I'm singing with or whatever it is. And it helps you to even, um, master those unison notes because you want to sound the same, even though you're a soprano and you're an alto and I'm a tenor that when we're executing, we want to sound the same. We want our vibratos to match. Yeah. We want uh, our endings to end, when they need to end. It's nothing like a consonant that's still going. Um, and so all of those technicalities are there. So I would say that for, for those who have never done studio, it can be more intense yeah. because um, when you hear the playback, if you're a little bit off, it's, gonna, it's going to blare. It's going to blare and you have so to- studio does not lie. <laughs> it's not live, but I absolutely love it because it comes with a discipline of let's sound the same let's do this now for live singing did you want to talk about live singing as well yeah okay yeah. so for live singing um I, I try my best to implement the same techniques as much as possible with studio mm -hmm. because you still want the blend to be there you still want the cohesiveness to be there um live singing sometimes for me gets a little difficult because it's more uncontrolled yeah. So in the moment where there are people in front of you and you're leading worship, and that's one mindset that, you know what, I want to make sure that I, I'm sensitive to the people who are in the room. I want people to experience God. I want people to feel God. I want people to leave. I want them to feel rich. I want them to feel just full. I want them to, I want them to feel the love of God, whatever they need, whatever it is. And I don't want to try to predict what they need, whatever they need. God, I want them to get it in this moment that you've allowed me to be a vessel. Um, and so you think about that. And then of course, you also want to think about that the vocality of what you do, you want it to be excellence as well. But um, sometimes it's trying if the stems are loud or if the stems aren't loud enough or if uh, one singer is blaring over another and you're trying to figure out how to mix oh. um, or if there's feedback from a monitor. Um, and then it's a whole nother world if you're using in-ear monitor system and you don't have live monitors in, in front of you. Um, it's, so many, it's so many moving parts when you're doing live um, and, and, and live is more frightening to me than a studio. <laughs> yeah, because you're right. Because there, there are. You said that it's not controlled. Absolutely. So when you're when you're traveling, I know you 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 had an opportunity to do some traveling. What are some of the things that you ask for, or even not even when you're traveling? Just what are some of the things that you ask for? How how are you communicating with your sound engineer? Wow, what you're asking for there. It's an excellent question. Um, one of the mainstays for me is um, I want to always be able to hear main keys. That's important because we don't. We don't want to sing in D if our keyboard player is playing in E. <laughs> um, I want to hear keys. I love to hear the click track for the timing. Um, I love bass kick. I really like to hear a little bit of everything, but I want to hear the kick specifically. I want to hear the click track. I want to hear the keyboard. 
um, or whoever's playing main keys. That's that. Those are my foundational pieces. And then if if I'm and I guess it's a difference if I'm if I'm leading, I want to be able to hear and feel my singers, mm-hmm. and I want them to feel completely mixed. Um, because as a singer, your singers can push you. Your singers can push you when you have that harmony and that cohesiveness. Yeah. You feel that partnership. You feel that partnership, and you want to. You want every everybody's part to be evident in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, But mainly for me is keys, you know, those things, keys, kick. um, And I I don't like my mic really blaring. I don't like a hallway sound. Um, Now reverb is fine in moments, um, but those are certain things that I ask for. I just, I really want to hear everybody, but mainly keys, kick, um, the click track, and I want to be able to hear the vocalist. Now, if I'm a background vocalist, um, of course, I want to hear the leader. I want to hear whoever's leading. Um, so for direct, directional purposes as well, um, even though they can give signals, you want to be able to hear where they're going. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to be able to hear keys. It's pretty much the same thing. And then I want to be able to hear my my counterparts, those who I'm singing in the background with, so that that blend, because I'm always trying to blend. I just want to blend. I don't want to blare out. I don't want to sound like a soloist in the background. I literally want to become one voice with those who, if I'm singing tenor, um, I'm literally, we're working together to try to match, to make sure that we sound like the same person as much as possible. So those are some of the things that I, you know, I don't have any really deep requests, but um, just, I think those are the basic ones. Yeah, no, that's great. I think that just brings some clarity for, you know, if someone who may not know, you know, that you can ask for whatever you want in your answers, you know, because it's really, you know, sometimes people, because we put our our praise team, our frontline on on in-ear monitors for the first time um, earlier this year, I think. Okay towards the end of the year and for some of them they had never experienced that before so they never even knew you know what to ask or what that you know what that looks like or anything gotcha um, but it just you know just kind of brings some clarity on the idea that that you can ask for whatever you want now if you're sharing a monitor if you're not using any your monitors and you are you know everyone's using the floor wedges then you yes. got to work together you know ha- have a conversation with the person that you're sharing that monitor with Absolutely. Ask, hey, what do you think? What do you? What does that sound like? How can you stand? Can you stand to have a little bit more um, bass? Can you? Can you hear the click? Let's have a little bit more of that track. You know, um, having that conversation with Absolutely. one another so you can all ha- hear what you need to hear. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's when it gets it gets tricky. Like you said, if you're sharing the same monitor. Yeah. That can be really tricky because I know sometimes um, some of my friends who I sing with often, they want different things. And so sometimes they ask for something and I'm like, oh my goodness, that's it's way too much of that yeah. for me. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's nothing worse than not being able to hear yourself and you have to guess, am I in the key? And if you're, if you're live streaming or if it's being recorded, oh, whatever's yeah. going out, yeah. You're praying that the engineer is masterfully mixing it. Please, God, please, <laughs> please let him catch it. <laughs> please let it catch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Jeremiah, this has been so great, so informative, and so encouraging and inspiring. Um, is there anything that you have, anything extra that you want to share before we go? Yeah, I just want to share to every worship leader. I just want to say, hang in there. Hang in there. Um, trust your ear. Um, I will say this. I believe that as worship leaders, I can honestly say I believe that we are some of the most sensitive people in the world Mm. Um, because God, with our calling, with our gift, God has given us um, the innate nature to be able to be sensitive so we feel a lot deeper. Um, We feel um, we have a great sense of feeling. Um, And so sometimes I think that we are some of the easiest people to get frustrated Mm. and flustered because we're so sensitive. Um, What I will share with the worship leaders, and this is what I use even at my church with the worship leaders. um, I use the story of Moses when he smoked the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Mm. And I use it as worship because we would use the term, don't browbeat the people. Mm. um, Because sometimes we think we know how the people should respond. Um, Now, sometimes our discernment is right. Sometimes the people 
aren't responding, but we don't know what the history of their lives are. We don't know what they went through. We don't know. And we want to make sure that we are the best representation of God and that we don't get in the way of God doing what he wants to do because we get frustrated because of our sensitivity. I just want to encourage us, don't smoke the rock. Speak to the rock. Don't become frustrated with the people. Don't become frustrated with the sound person. Um, talk it through, work it through. Um, and then in your private time, pray it through. That's so um, even if you have to turn down the plate to say, God, bring the cohesiveness that we need. God, bring the camaraderie that we need. God, let the team work together. God, let the people be blessed. Um, and just know that if you have to keep planting a seed and if you have to, if you have to water it week after week, or you just have to trust God to do, do that. Do not smoke the rock. Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. And that's, that's, been one of my my principles for a long time as a worship leader um to do as much as i can um to prepare before i mean moses goes to the mountain and talks to god then he comes back and the people are doing something totally different and right then he goes from being in god's presence to being angry yeah and so just that quick don't think that we can't ever think that we're so close to god and that we know so much about him and that we have so much of his presence that when we come down from the mountain that we can't get angry in a split second. Wow. I want to encourage us, pray that God allows you to speak to the rock and to never smoke the rock because you don't want to miss the promise of your calling, the promise of your gift. And you don't want souls to be lost um, because of a, a, a bad witness and being frustrated through this gift of, insensitive, of, of sensitivity that God has given us. Man, that's so good. That is so great. I appreciate yeah. you sharing that so much. And yeah. so, and especially in this time, you know, we're all dealing with different things and, and we're all in different scenarios. And so we have to make sure that we are, we're, we're in a position where we can hear how God wants us to, to, teach, to handle his people. They're his people. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's so good. Thank you so Absolutely. much for sharing that. Um, before we go, there is one other quick question. So okay. I have a question if there's some time. The, a hoarse voice, is there a technique that can be used on some parts of a song in a healthy way to the vocal cords or in all cases this damage? Mm. Oh, I'm, I, I hope I'm going to be able to understand this. Um, so if you have a, a Casio, uh, is asking, I think you, what you're asking is if you have a hoarse voice, is there a way to sing through that um, it, without causing any more damage to your voice? If you, if, have you ever had the, the instance when you were hoarse and you had to just sing through? I have. Yeah. Um, that's when I had to rely on what everything that I was taught, because I think one of the things about vocalists is, and we talked about the body, getting to know the body, because everything is placement. So one thing my vocal coach would tell me, she would literally tell me, um, your body may not operate the same every day. So just think, some days you may get up and you may be feeling good. The next day you may get up and it's like, for no reason, my knee hurts. Mm -hmm. um, our body changes from day to day, um, depending on how much rest we get, whatever it is. So finding placements in our body, because, you know, I've had moments, um, was Cass Cassio, I've had moments where I may have sung on a Tuesday and my voice was, felt like it was 100%. And mm -hmm. then Wednesday comes and I feel 60% and we may be singing the same songs mm -hmm. and I don't feel the same um, freedom yeah. in terms of, so I have to find the placement. I have to find placement in my body to, um, so, okay, how can I sing this without damaging? Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's not singing the higher notes. You know, now if you're singing background and there's a guaranteed note that you're supposed to sing, um, I think it's learning your body. Um, I'll literally sit down and I'll try to work with different placements in my body, especially certain vowels. Mm -hmm. There are certain vowels in certain ranges where it's like, whoa, this is a little different for me. So I'll literally sit and I'll go over that same vowel over and over and over again until I find that placement. And it helps me that if I'm hoarse, I'm like, okay, maybe I can sing it like this. Or maybe I need to mix my voice this day. You know, so I think it's placement and knowing your body and um, just exploring, just getting to, to, to learn how do I, how, how can I sing if my voice is hoarse? How can I sing if it's a hundred percent? I think it's learning how to maneuver 
and finding placement. Yeah. That would be yeah. my, my answer. Yeah, for sure. Finding different, and I like to think of it as like manipulating the sound. So like if you're singing, you know, in one pitch that, you know, you can't sing it on a particular day, then maybe you have to change the shape of the, the sound or the shape of the vowel. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's see. He said, for example, a blues singer. So maybe also um, if you are singing a song um, that requires you to sing it, for example, gospel music. Yes. I said earlier, you know, sometimes I, don't, I would prefer not to sing gospel because of the way that the sound of gospel music is. It re sometimes yeah. it requires a lot of grit. Wear and tear. Uh, it's a lot of wear and tear on your voice. So if, if I know that I'm getting ready to sing or if I'm if, if in the middle of praise and worship, I'm singing a song that I'm a little bit more expressive and I'm doing that more of that, ah, you know, all of that. Yeah, yeah. Then I know that at the end of me singing, I need to do some cool down. Some, so we'll warm up, right? Well, a lot of times we talk about warm up your voice before singing. Yes. Well, then you need to do the same kind of technique but in reverse to kind of reset your voice. That's good. So it's almost like, you know, you, you, you charge your, you charge the engine, you charge your battery, you know, to use it, you use your voice, but then when you're done using your voice, you need to reset it. Um, do things like lip trills. Yes. But do them down. So instead of going from the lower register up, you would start from your and just kind of reset your voice. Um, that will allow it to get to a place where it can kind of promote it'll it'll self heal itself if that makes Absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So definitely, um, if you're doing some type of singing, um, Cassio, that's causing some strain, some vocal strain, don't worry about it in the middle of your performance. I'm saying performance for a lack. You know, we know what we're talking yeah. about in the middle of you singing, in the middle of your your ministry or whatever. Sing your song, do your thing, but when you're done. Take some time to do a cool down with your voice. That's good. Take some time to, you know, hydrate. Take some time to, um, uh, you know, make sure you're getting good rest at the end of the, at the end of the day. Take some time to not speak, you know, yes. don't do, don't talk a lot, you know, at the end of the service. Just really take some extra care with your voice. Yes. Yeah. I have a throat spray that um, I'm going to send Jeremiah as my gift. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate it. I, I keep I keep a small bottle here with me. Um, wow. It has essential oils in it, and it has um, honey and vegetable glycerin, and um, yeah, and water. And yeah. it, but it's so amazing. It just it just coats my throat anytime I'm wow. to, to reset while I'm singing. Um, but you can get this. Uh, you can order it on my website at LaRueLive.com. You can get it there. But Jeremiah is going to get the spot. Awesome. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight, man. Oh, I'm, I'm so honored. I'm, I'm blessed that you have been here. You are one of the most humble persons that I've, wow. I that I know. I, everything that you've said tonight, you always um, gave shout outs to somebody else, which wow. volumes of your character and, and your heart, um, because you recognize it's not just you yourself. And I appreciate that. I, I appreciate you honoring um, those that serve alongside you, I appreciate you honoring your your, your pastors, your parents, um, your team. It just speaks huge volume. Oh, no. so, and the way I, I believe that the way that you serve your parents, the way you serve your church, um, that God's going to continue to bless you, and He's going to bring people alongside you to to help oh. you, uh, whatever whatever God has planned for your future. He's gonna He's gonna reward you for that. I received that. Yeah. So keep keep going. Keep going. This is this has been an honor, and I can say in 36 years of all that I've done, this is this is one of the full circle moments for me, wow. because since about age 16, 17, Larue, you have been a great part of um, the thread of of who I am as a worship leader, wow. and I don't take that lightly. And I I thank you, and this is from someone speaking from from afar. You were planting seeds in a garden way in Maryland and you had no clue. So thank you. Wow. <laughs> wow. To God be the glory. Yay. Well, you guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Um, we will be back on next Tuesday. No, next Monday <laughs> <laughs> at 7 p.m. 
Uh, I love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys real soon. Jeremiah, just hang on real tight. Sure. Awesome.